walkthrough video for lab 10. Lab 10, we use time division multiplexing to control the display of the um, seven segment uh, digits on the basis three board. Okay, so time division multiplexing sounds like a fancy term, but basically it's saying we're gonna turn on these digits one at a time, each has its own time slot, and we're gonna do it at a rate that makes the display look good. So the thing is, um, I think the underlying clock speed of the basis three boards is 100 megahertz. So if you just change the display selection on each cycle of the clock, that would be switching through too fast. The displays wouldn't have time to physically react and turn on. Uh, but then if you did it, you know, if you, if you synchronize through these digits one at a time, and let's talk about that for a second. You know, what, what we're talking about here is we're controlling the signal coming out of the um, anode decoder. All right, so we did that with the digit select line. Okay, and before we used switches to do that, and when we selected zero, zero, we got, you know, one of these turning on, all right? And then if we switched to a different combination, let me change it and just select this so I can move it. Zero, one selects this digit. One, zero selects this digit. One, one selects this digit. So what our idea here is that we're gonna get a counter circuit, which is a state machine that we've been talking about in class. We're gonna get a counter circuit that on clock cycles will turn on the first digit, the second digit, third digit, fourth digit, and then cycle back around. And it does it at just the right speed where it looks like all the digits are always on without a bunch of flicker. So on, 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 cycling through with the counter. Okay, so that's the idea of time division multiplexing. Okay, so uh, in the pre-lab, there's some, uh, there's a web link that shows um, what the rate needs to be for human vision in order to make the displays look continuous. So I'd like you to take a look at that and figure out what that clock rate should be. We're gonna have to take the 100 megahertz uh, clock that's coming from the board and divide that down with a counter. All right, so uh, as you read through the lab, uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use control um, a counter to uh, do a couple of things. One, we're gonna use it as a, a clock divider, all right? And the frequency of that clock division is, is found from this web link that I just mentioned, okay? So take a look at that. The other thing we're gonna do is we're gonna use another counter to generate the select for the decoder. All right, so let's talk about how that would work. All right, you know what a, well, maybe you don't. Here's what a counter does, all right? You start, well, let me draw a state diagram. Here's a two-bit counter. Zero, 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 one, one, zero, one, one. And as we sequence through here, it just counts when it's enabled, when the, you know, the control line for the counter is enabled, all right? So what our idea of, of, of doing here would be to run a two-bit counter, all right, and use that, use these outputs of the flip-flops to control the select line of the anode detector. All right, so the select lines are right up here. Okay, so if we connect this to the counter, it would select these digits one at a time and we would get things cycling through. Okay, all right. Well, um, the other thing that you're using the, the counter for is to divide the clock. All right, so let's talk about how that would work. All right, so if I had a bigger counter, let's, let's say, um, let me move this around a little bit. Let's say I had a three-bit counter. Okay, so that goes zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then seven. After seven, it circles back around. This is a three-bit counter. Of course, these are binary codes, 
All right, so seven would actually be one, one, one. Six would be one, one, zero. You get the idea there. And so the way we would design this counter is we'd set up a D register. And when we get to seven, we would have this go back to the next state. All right, so again, the control line that makes the counter work is an enable input that allows it to count. Okay. All right, so <clears throat> what we would then do, if we want to divide the clock, we would also generate like a, a tick signal is what they're showing here. All right, and so the tick only shows up in the last state. So you have a clock that's marching along at a certain rate. And so after you know every eight cycles, the tick line goes up when you hit n equals seven. So, you know, I'm not gonna draw this exactly, but you know, suppose I had um, eight clock cycles when I get this eighth one, or yeah, on the eighth one, the tick signal goes high. All right. And so you use this clock to drive the rest of the calculator circuit, all right? Now we talked about in class that it's generally bad to, this is a form of gating the clock. It's generally bad to gate the clock for high-speed digital designs, but I got news for you, this is not a high-speed digital design, so we can get away with the clock skew that's generated from gating the clock using a counter. Okay, so that's what we're gonna do in this lab. All right, so uh, next, um, how do we make the counter is the question. All right, so here's um, code that's included in the lab section. Unfinished counter is just barely unfinished. There's only one line that you need to do. All right, but the interesting things about it are it's parameterized, so you can go with a one-bit counter. We're gonna need a two-bit counter. And then if you're dividing the clock from 100 megahertz down to a reasonable rate for um, the visual aspect of a, of a seven segment display design, uh, you're gonna need to divide that clock by a substantial number. All right, so calculate that and you'd have a, a pretty big counter, you know, bigger than 10 bits, for example. All right, so I'll let you figure out what that number should be. All right, um, so that's the reason we want this to be parameterized because we don't want to have to redo the counter for a different number of bits. All right, so uh, we, we define an input, we have the clock, we have a reset, we have an enable like I talked about before in the state diagrams. Okay, we're going to use internal registers. Okay, so we have um, registers for um, the Q reg and the next state is how we're gonna do this counter. All right, so then we have sensitivity based on the positive edge of the clock, and we're gonna also add a reset. Okay, although we're not necessarily using the reset right away, but we, we still enable that in case we wanna use reset. All right, uh, and there's there might be a reset. We, we used a reset button somewhere in our design, so we, we need to put that in. Okay, so <clears throat> the next state, Logic, uh, like we did before with a, um, a register, is that if you have a reset, then you, then you reset, all right? Else, the, the next state of the register is from the state logic, all right? So the next step is you need output logic, all right? And so we're going to, I'm sorry, next state logic, so we're gonna use a sensitivity list, any variable that changes, you know, we use the wildcard uh, asterisk here. All right, if we have an enable, then the next state should be what? Well, it's a counter, all right? So you should increment the next state. All right, I'll let you put that in. It's pretty straightforward, there's nothing complicated here. All right, if we don't have enable, then the next state just holds the value, it doesn't count. All right, so so you just take the old, you know, Q, Q next is Q reg, whatever the old state was. Okay, from there, we can assign the actual count and we can make a tick. All right, remember the tick is when the register values are all equal to one. So this is a concatenation notation that says, I'm gonna put in bits of one. 
And you see why I need that to be programmatic because um, if I have a variable size counter, you know, I can't put in all the combinations, all right? So I need some kind of notation that, it, that uh, expands this algorithmically in the code so that I can get the correct number of ones. So if I have two bits, you know, this would be a one, one. If I had three bits, it would be one, one, one and so forth and so on.